Good morning, viewers. This is Kasturi Day. Today, I'm going to again discuss the question answers of this chapter that is mentioned in one chapter according to YCC syllabus class nine. So, I'll start with some numericals today. So, before I start, I will request you to please to subscribe my channel and also ring the notification bell so that uh, you can be. Uh, notified as soon as a new video is uploaded and if you are liking the video press the like button share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos and also uh please do meditate before starting your day okay so for uh, meditation let us start with the meditation first so we'll start with the meditation for that please concentrate on a point of light you can concentrate on a bulb lighted bulb or two okay and please concentrate on that. Think to be the point of light from which a source of light is coming to you, reaching you in every part of your body, energizing the whole body, each and every part of the body is energized by that point of light, that source of light. This is the energy source, which is to get energy, get happiness, get interest in your studies, in whatever work you do, enjoying that, becoming successful in your life. So let us start with the numericals. So first one uh, is a train that takes three hours to travel from Agra to Delhi with a uniform speed of 65 km per hour. Okay, find the distance between the two cities. Okay, so we know distance is equal to speed into time, okay? And here time is given as three hours and the uniform speed is 65 km per hour. So 65 into three, that's 195 kilometers will be the distance between Delhi, uh, Agra to Delhi. Next story is, next question is, a car travels first to 30 kilometers with a uniform speed of 60 kilometers per hour. And then the next 30 kilometers with a uniform speed of 40 kilometers per hour. So first 30 kilometer, 60 kilometer per hour speed. And then next 30 kilometers uh, has a uniform speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Now calculate the total time of the journey, the average speed of the car. So the first distance, that is 30 kilometers, speed is 60 kilometers per hour. Okay. Now next distance, next 30 kilometers, speed is 40 kilometers per hour. So the total distance will be 30 plus 30. Okay, that's 60 kilometers. And for time one, that is uh, for uh, the distance of 30 kilometers, so we, where the speed is 60 kilometers per hour, the time taken is how much distance by speed? So uh, 30 by uh, 60 okay so that will that is half hour half an hour okay and another time uh, for the distance second distance second 30 kilometer distance the speed is 40 kilometer per hour that is three fourth of an hour now the total time will be one by two plus three by four that is five by four hours or you can say five by four into 60 that is 75 minutes okay this is the total distance now next question is uh, sorry, total time. The next is average speed of the car. So how to find the average speed of velocity? Total distance by total time. Okay. So average speed will be total distance by total time. So what is the uh, total distance? Total distance is 60. And average uh, speed, I mean, total time is 5 by 4. So that means that way gives us 48 kilometer per hour. That will be the average speed of the car. Next is a train takes two hours to reach the station uh, B from station A. 
from B, uh, sorry, uh, from A to B it reaches uh, in two hours. And again, when it is returning, so it takes three hours from station B to B. Okay, so from A to B, it's going is within two hours. And from B to A, it's coming back within three hours. Okay, so the distance between the two stations will, is given as 200 kilometers. Now find the average speed, the average velocity of the train. <clears throat> now first, the distance between the two stations is 200, so it's going and again coming back. That is 400 kilometers. Double the distance to 400 kilometers. Then the total time taken. One, it is going, uh, 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 two hours it's taking well, while uh, going to the station B, and then it is coming back from station B, it's three hours. So total time is five hours, two plus three. Now, average speed will be total distance traveled by total time taken. So, 400 by 5, that will be equal to 80 kilometer per hour will be the average speed. Now, average velocity. Now, see, what is the average velocity? Average velocity is, again, total distance by total, total displacement by total time. Okay. Now, what is the displacement here? Because it's starting from A, going to B, again returning to B from, uh, again returning to A from B. So there is net no displacement. That is displacement is zero. Coming to the same point. So displacement is zero. Therefore, what happens? Velocity will also be zero. Because displacement by time is equal to velocity. Okay, average velocity. The total displacement is zero. By time taken is five hours again. Okay. Then what happens? Zero by anything that becomes zero. So the total, that average velocity will be zero. Clear? Next, we move on to the next question. A body is moving vertically upwards. Its velocity changes at constant rate from 50 meter per second to 20 meter per second in three seconds. Okay. What is its acceleration? So it's uh, once the acceleration, the velocity changes from 50 to 20. Okay, initial velocity is 50 and its final velocity is 20, okay? And time taken is 3 seconds. So what is its acceleration? So acceleration will be what? Final velocity minus initial velocity by the time taken. So change in velocity by the time. Okay, <laughs> that is change in velocity is final, final minus initial by time. Then final velocity is 20, 20 minus 50 by 3. Okay, so that is 30 by 3, that means minus 10 meter per second squared. That means it is retarding, negative velocity, negative acceleration. So that means the uh, body is retarding, okay? Retarding, uh, retardation is there, that is 10 meter per second squared, okay? Now, a car, next question, a car accelerates at the rate of 5 meter per second squared. Find the increase in its velocity in 2 seconds. So uh, we know that acceleration is change in velocity by time or increase in velocity by time or final minus initial velocity by time. Okay. So acceleration is given that is 5 meter per second square and velocity, uh, I mean uh, time given that is 2 seconds. Okay. And we need to find the change in velocity or increase in velocity. Okay. So V minus U we have to find out. So the formula, according to the formula, A is equal to V minus U by T. That means V minus U is equal to A into T or 5 into 2, that's 10 meter per second. So increase in velocity will be 10 meter per second. Okay. Next is a car moving with a velocity of 20 meter per second. The brakes are applied to retard it at the rate of 2 meter per second squared. What will be the velocity after five seconds of applying the brakes? So what is it telling? The question is telling that the velocity is, <clears throat> its initial velocity is 20 meter per second. Okay. Now after that, after uh, uh, the brakes are applied to retard it at the rate of two meter per second. Okay. Now, uh, a brake is applied, brakes are applied and the body retards. That is, it goes on negative acceleration to 2 meter per second squared. Okay. Now, after 5 seconds, after applying the brake, the what will be the velocity? We need to find it. That is, final velocity we need to find it. 
So initial velocity, we know that's 20 meter per second. And retardation is 2 meter per second square or negative acceleration is minus 2 meter per second square. Time taken is 5 seconds. Now we need to find out B. So we know acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time. So what is change in velocity? B minus U is equal to 80. Okay. So B we don't know. Initial velocity is 20. Okay. And uh, acceleration is negative, that is minus two into time, that is five seconds. So what is that? B is equal to, B minus 20 is equal to minus 10, okay? Or E is equal to minus 10 plus 20, that is 10 meter per second. So value velocity will be 10 meter per second. Clear? Next, we move on to the next question. A bicycle initially moving with a velocity of 5 meter per second accelerates for 5 seconds at the rate of 2 meter per second squared. Okay, what will be its final velocity? Same like the previous one only. Here it's telling its initial velocity is 5 meter per second. Acceleration is 2 meter per second squared and a time is 5 seconds. So we need to find out the final velocity. Same thing, A is equal to B minus U by T. So B is equal to uh, B minus U is equal to 80. B minus 5, as we know, is the initial velocity. And uh, acceleration is 2 meter per second squared into 5 seconds. So that is 10. B minus 5 is equal to 10, or B is equal to 10 plus 5, that is 15 meter per second. Next question. A car is moving in a straight line with the speed of 18 kilometer per hour. So the speed is 18 kilometer per, per hour. And it stopped in five seconds by applying the brakes. Okay, after uh, applying the brakes in within five seconds, it stops. That is, final velocity becomes zero. Okay, its speed was initial speed was 18 km per hour. And it, after uh, applying the brakes, it stopped. That is, its velocity became zero. And it, uh, in the time taken is five seconds. Now, what is the speed of the car in meter per second? What is the retardation and what is the speed of the car after two seconds for apply, of applying the brakes? Now, initial velocity we know is 18 km per hour. Okay, so that is the, in the speed of the car. So what is that speed of the car in meter per second? That is 18 into 5 by 18 meter per second, or you can say 5 meter per second is the initial velocity. That is the speed of the car. Okay, now we want to calculate now second portion is retardation we need to calculate okay so time taken is five seconds now as the car stops after five seconds so velocity final velocity becomes zero meter per second okay so according to the formula a is equal to v minus u by t so that means final velocity is a zero so v is equal to zero, u is equal to five, and time taken is five. So zero minus five by five, that is minus five by five. That is minus one meter per second. So retardation will be minus one meter per second or one meter per second uh, retardation, okay? Now speed, uh, speed of the car after applying the brakes. After applying the brakes, what has happened to the speed of the car? Now we know initial speed is 5 meter per second. That is initial velocity is 5 meter per second. Time taken is 2 seconds. Okay. See, the speed of the car after 2 seconds of applying the brake. After 2 seconds, what is its final velocity? So time taken is 2 seconds. And acceleration we know we have found out now just a uh, question back. That is minus 1 meter per second. So capital B, that is uh, not cap, I mean, say final velocity is equal to initial velocity minus 80, okay? That is acceleration into time. So initial velocity, we know 5 minus in uh, this one, acceleration, that is 1 into 2, okay? So that is minus 1 into 2. That means minus 2, 5 minus 2, that is 3 meter per second. Or you can say if you convert it into this one, <coughs> A kilometer per hour, then 3 into 18 by 5, that is 10.8 kilometer per hour. Okay. Next, uh, we move on to the other questions. That is, what information about the motion of the body are obtained from the displacement time graph? From when there is a displacement time graph, what information do we get from that graph? 
From displacement time graph, the nature of the motion or the state of rest can be understood. Whether the body is in a state of motion or whether the body is in a state of rest, we can identify from that displacement time graph. Okay. Now, from this graph, a slope can be drawn, which gives the value of the velocity of the body at any instant of time. Okay. So, from the displacement time graph, there is a slope of the graph. Uh, we have to uh, we have drawn it from a slope which can be drawn on the graph uh, due to the uh, again this displacement time uh, axis that is okay displacement will be the y axis and the x axis will be time okay and there will be a slope which will be inside the graph okay now this slope gives the value of the velocity of the body at any instant of time Okay, at any point of time, what will be the velocity of the body that can be taken out from this slope, which in turn can be used to form the, to draw a velocity time graph. This, is, uh, this value of this velocity can be used to draw a velocity time graph. Okay. Next question is, can displacement time sketch be parallel to the displacement axis? Give reasons we ask. No, it cannot be so. No, the displacement time sketch cannot be parallel to the displacement axis because it can never, uh, a straight line, it cannot be a straight line parallel to the displacement as such line means that the distance covered by the body in a certain direction increases without any increase in time. Okay, so this means what? You can increase the distance. Okay, in a certain direction, the distance can be increased without the increase in time, and that cannot be possible. Without time, the distance cannot be increased. The velocity of the body is infinite, which is not possible. Now, draw a displacement time graph for a boy who is going to school with a uniform velocity. He starts from his uh, house home, that is uh, initial velocity will be zero, and he will be moving with uniform velocity to his school, okay? As is going with uniform velocity, slope of the displacement time graph will be a straight line, which will be passing through the origin, okay? Like this will be the graph, see? So it will be moving with uniform velocity, and it will be passing through the origin. This is the origin, zero mark. So this will be the uniform velocity of the boy. Now state how the velocity time graph can be used to find the acceleration of a body, distance traveled by a body in a given time, and the displacement of the body in a given time. Okay. Now the velocity time graph can be used to determine the following. First is acceleration of the body. How? Since acceleration is equal to the ratio of change in velocity and the time taken, Therefore, the acceleration of the body is given by the slope or the gradient of the velocity time graph. Okay, so what happens from the velocity time graph, when there, the velocity will be on the y-axis and x-axis will be time, the slope which is drawn, that will give us the acceleration of the body. Because acceleration means what? Ratio of change in velocity to time. Now, the distance traveled by the body is a given time. How can this be calculated? The distance traveled in the body in, is obtained by the arithmetic sum of the positive displacement and the negative displacement without the sign. So what do we do? For finding out from the uh, velocity time graph, how do we find the distance from that? For this, we need to uh, Arithmetically, sum up the positive displacement and the negative displacement okay, without any sign. Okay. <clears throat> Next is uh, the displacement of the body. As displacement is equal to the product of velocity and time, we know that velocity is equal to displacement by time. Okay, so displacement will be velocity into time. Therefore, the displacement of the body is the area enclosed between the velocity time sketch and the y-axis. 
Okay, so what will be the displacement of the body? Is the area enclosed by the velocity time sketch and the x axis, that is the time axis. Time axis and the velocity time sketch. Okay, the total displacement is obtained by adding the positive displacement and the negative displacement numerically with the proper sign. Okay, the proper sign they are added. Then only that will give us the displacement of the body and for the uh, distance they are, uh, they, they are added without the sign, without the negative sign. Okay, they are added. Okay, that is the total distance. And for displacement, we need to give the proper sign. Okay, <laughs> because that gives the direction. What can you say about the nature of the motion of a body if its displacement time graph is a straight line parallel to the y par parallel to the time axis, a straight line inclined to the time axis with an acute angle, a straight line inclined to the time axis with an obtuse angle, a curve. Okay. <clears throat> so for this, a straight line which is parallel to the uh, uh, time axis, if a straight line is drawn which is parallel to the time axis, that will give, that is x-axis if it is parallel, then that indicates that the body is stationary or is moving, not moving at all. It's stationary or it's not moving at all. That's why what happens? that it becomes parallel to the time axis, okay? Now, if the straight line is inclined to the time axis with an acute angle, then what happens? It indicates that the displacement and the time are in linear relationship. That is, the body travels equal distance in equal intervals of time in a certain direction, okay? That is in linear relationship. That means it, the body travels equal distance in equal intervals of time in, uh, in a certain direction. Okay, that means it can be said that the motion is away from the starting point with uniform velocity. It has uniform velocity and it's moving away from the starting point, from the origin zero. Now, if it is inclined to the time axis with an obtuse angle, then what happens? That indicates that there is motion towards the starting point, that is coming back towards the starting point with uniform velocity. Here, next is a curve. If there is a, the slope is a curve, then what that indicates? It indicates that the body moves with a varying speed in a fixed direction. Direction is okay, but it has a speed, a, a variable speed. Okay, it's said to have variable velocity. Okay, now draw a velocity time graph of for a body moving with initial velocity u and uniform acceleration a. Use this graph to find the distance traveled by the body in time t. Okay, so this is the graph uh, which has an initial velocity of u and final velocity of, uh, sorry, its acceleration is small a. Okay, so, okay, the final velocity is as b, small b, okay. And time taken is t. So it starts with the initial velocity. It's not zero, so it will start with an initial velocity of u, and it will reach. It will start with an acceleration a, and it will reach a point that is there. The, the velocity at that point will be. Uh, I mean, after that, it changes its velocity of small b, and when it reaches to uh, b, it is its velocity is t. Okay, and the time taken is t. Okay, so this will be the graph. Okay. So the distance traveled by the body in t second will be area between the velocity time graph and the x-axis. So it's the velocity time graph, the area between <clears throat> this one, uh, dt graph, velocity time graph, and the x-axis. So x -axis. So that will be uh, distance traveled by the body in page second. That is area, it's a trapezium which is uh, showing in the figure. So it's trapezium OABD. That is the trapezium shaped structure which has been formed by the graph. Okay. So that will be equal to half into some of the parallel sides into the perpendicular distance between them. 
So some of the parallel sides will be this one is U, this one is U also CD is parallel to OA. So U will be both the places and this one BC, BC is equal to EA. Okay, that is small B. Okay, so uh, BD will be B plus U and OA will be Q. Okay, so some of the parallel sides will be U plus U plus B. Okay. Sorry, this will be total will be B. Okay, from here to here it will be B. So U plus B will be the uh, uh, sum of the parallel sides and the perpendicular distance between them it will be T. Okay, so U plus B by into T by 2 will be the R1. Okay. So draw the velocity time graph for a body which is moving with uniform velocity and uniform acceleration. Uniform velocity and uniform acceleration. Velocity time graph for a body moving with uniform velocity will be like this, parallel to the time axis. Okay, and uh, if it is moving with uniform acceleration, then it will be uh, inclined to the y, uh, x axis with an acute angle. A draw a graph for acceleration against time for uniform accelerated motion. How can it be used to find the change in speed in a certain intervals of time? The area enclosed between the straight line and the time axis for each interval of time gives the value of change in speed in that intervals of time. Okay, so the area which is enclosed between this OP and uh, QX, okay, that gives what? the between the straight line and the time axis that will give us the uh, value of change in the speed in that interval of time okay so change in speed can be given from the value of change in speed can be given by the area of place in this figure okay now next question is draw a velocity time graph for the free fall of a body under gravity starting from rest take t is equal to 10 meter per second squared the velocity time graph for the free fall of a body under gravity is a straight line. As the object is free falling, it undergoes an acceleration g is equal to 10 meter per second square. Okay, so its acceleration is 10 meter per second square acceleration. So it will be like this. Okay, free falling. So for uh, first to second, it will be 10 to uh, for second second, uh, two seconds it will be 20, three seconds 30, four seconds 40, five seconds 50. So it will be uniform acceleration. Okay. So uh, let us stop here. I'll continue with the rest of the questions in my next video. Till then, please go through this. If you have any doubt, please do write in the comment box. You can also write in my email ID, that is kasturi74 at gmail.com. And if you are liking the video, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And don't forget to subscribe my channel with uh, ringing the notification bell so that as soon as new video is uploaded, you will get, you, know, you will be notified. Okay. And uh, don't forget to meditate before starting your day. That will help you a lot. Believe me, it will help you a lot. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for joining and have a good day.